fundraising world, they'll tell you that the number one reason why uh, you don't receive a donation from someone is because you fail to ask them. Ian and Carol do not have to be asked to give tzedakah. They are proactive. They honestly consider it a privilege and an honor to fulfill the mitzvah of tzedakah. One of the needs that I recognized early on in the school was a need for more interactive whiteboards. The teachers used these interactive whiteboards or smart boards incredibly effectively. It was a real pleasure to be able to call Ian and say, can you help us out with a smart board? And hear him say, how about two smart boards? It's just impossible to have that Jewish self-esteem for your kids and your family unless you're really engaged. You can't get uh, the type of connection to our heritage you know, from, from uh, kind of a once a week experience. You really have to be involved in it. And the more involved we've become, the more we've taken away from it. He's a ball of energy, he's charismatic, but at the same time, he is truly humble. It's never about him. I've been lucky enough to interact with uh, some of the fellows that founded the Hebrew Academy and founded Yeshiva. And, you know, these guys were trailblazers. Could you imagine when there were so few Jews in Atlanta and they were building schools? And I think today we're also trailblazers because the community is growing. Uh, there's people moving here from other states. So I think that in a way, like, the Jewish community maybe is going through a second wave of growth. And I think that's exciting because it's going to create more vibrancy and more opportunity for learning, for education, and for creating, uh, you know, uh, our future. You know, Carol serves on the board. Her work as, as secretary and her opinions and involvement in committee work are invaluable. Relative to all these other high schools out there, you know, they don't have the most beautiful building and they don't have so many choices in extracurricular. And they're having dual, you know, a Hebrew and a Judaic, you know, secular intense program. So for an average kid, they could be, you know, perceived to be giving up things. But what they're getting which is that connection and that camaraderie. So again, it's sort of what, what's the final product? Ian is one of the most passionate people I know, and he exemplifies something that my father of blessed memory said to me when I was a teenager. As he said, son, you can make the time to do everything you want to do, when I would give him an excuse that I didn't have time to do something. Ian exemplifies that and that he makes the time to be a tremendous father, attends his children's events, to be a great business partner and to be a leader in the community and to give of himself to organizations that he believes in. You know what the deal is? The deal is that your time expands. So didn't we learn that uh, there was never a limit of how many people could fit in the Beit HaMikdash? Because it just expanded, right? It just expanded. Well, that's how time is. If you're going to fill it up with useful things, productive things, you're going to find time. They give their time because they're committed to Judaism, they're committed to children, they're committed to their community, and they just are exceptional people. They understand that they don't satisfy their own religious obligation and growth simply and merely through tzedakah and community activism. What is so impressive about them is that they are also engaged religiously and spiritually. And actually you can see the growth in them and the greater commitment to prayer, to study, to mitzvah observance as they get more involved on the community level also. They're the type of people that not only are they out in the community in public roles and being incredibly giving of their time and their resources, but they do so in private as well in a way that other people don't see. It's, it is a big part of our life. Uh, the kids are very in tune to the idea that if you can afford to do something, you should. That sense of menschlichkeit and Jewish commitment is very natural to them and so natural that the kids pick it up and the kids, the kids embody it as well. Their four children embody those values of menschlichkeit and commitment to the Jewish community and a connection to Hashem as well. It's not only about school, it's about Jewish community. And I would hope that the kids, you know, can see from us that we sort of have our hands in different things across the city. Well, my parents spearheaded um, the making of a bigger child um, hood like daycare and school. And I went there when I was younger. So it's like great to see that they continued it and they're trying to help other like young children because that's where I started. They don't really sit to us and talk about Sadaka. They just 
their actions are so vivid that it'd be hard to not see it going on. Like when the rabbis come to the door, they always give, like every time mostly. For my parents, it's not enough to be in the community. Rather, it's about being active members who give of themselves wholeheartedly. Whether it be weekly shear or schedules based around board meetings, the community ranks as a high priority. Their passion for growth and Torah learning allows myself, my family, and others to learn from their example. Their achievement in the Atlanta Jewish community instills a sense of pride that makes it my pleasure to be Ian and Carol Ratner's daughter. Miss you, love you. One of the byproducts that you can't even measure of being involved in the Jewish community and in school and uh, religious community is the amazing relationships that Carol and I have been able to develop, not only with each other, but how we, that we've developed relationships all over the community that we would not have, but for being involved in these amazing organizations. And it has made life so much more enjoyable to have relationships with people that we wouldn't know if we weren't involved. <music>